This episode is brought to you by Helamite Brand Low Sticks. With smooth, Talarn blended tobacco, Helamite Brand Low Sticks are the finest you can get. Hey there, scabby scummers and gangers. Crimson Oracle here with another episode of my Battlefield on a Budget series. This time we're going to be taking another look at ways that you can use uh, tin cans that you are otherwise going to recycle. This one is a couple of bits of scatter and a larger structure. Uh, it was a fun little thing to throw together. It's a nice kind of uh, different feel and shape than a lot of the other terrain that we've worked on. This build uses little elbows for PVC pipe. I get them in a 10 pack for like $5 at the hardware store. Um, I'm sure you can buy them in even greater numbers for even cheaper, but they are a very nifty uh, resource because they give a little bit of a different kind of color and feel to everything. Um, they give a little bit of a different shape than what you are used to uh, with a lot of the packaging that you're going to be reusing for this kind of project. So uh, they are nice for mixing things up and for making our tanks look like they are actually, you know, being pumped somewhere. <laughs> so uh, sit back and enjoy. Um, we're coming up on actually doing the board surface. Uh, if you follow me on Twitter or Facebook, uh, you will see that I've already completed most of the work on the board um, and uh, so that video will be done soon enough um, and of course once I'm done with the ash waste board that I'm working on now uh, I'm actually going to do another ash waste board and I am planning on continuing this series once these boards are done um, I am hoping to do a bunch of interior tiles that will use uh, the insulation foam that I purchased for the board surfaces. And I am uh, excited to show off how you can use that material to uh, continue making a variety of different types of boards and surfaces. So uh, look forward to where all this is going, but in the meanwhile, uh, enjoy watching how I whip cans up into uh, different, <laughs> different shapes. So to start with, obviously, you're going to want to wash out your cans and get the tabs off of them. Uh, and then I used a little circle template that I had to make little circles that go inside. These will sit on the inside of the top of the can and you glue those down and suddenly you've got a surface that you can connect things to. Uh, so uh, next I am going to make little struts to support the cans. I want them to all be the same size. And then I'm going to use that outline there on the uh, circle template in order to cut the shape of the can out so the feet fit. And of course, if you enjoy my channel, uh, don't forget to hit the like button on this video and subscribe. I am making all of the struts at the same time uh, because I really wanted to make sure that they were consistent and so I cut them all out at once and made sure they all lined up pretty well with each other. Gluing the struts on definitely required the use of accelerant as it was a bit difficult to get everything to stay in place long enough for the glue to cure. And then uh, I trim off the writing on the PVC and glue it on. I'm doing a bunch of these cans at once as it allows me to uh, get all of these steps out of the way and uh, wind up with, you know, a bunch of pieces of terrain out of one set period of work. Uh, this is a nice way to kind of uh, optimize your time. So cut out all of the uh, covers there. And of course, glue on the feet.
Now the tall can needs some attention, so I'm going to be cutting a piece to go at the top uh, because the idea is that this is a multi-level piece of terrain uh, that is a little bit different from the other multi-level terrain that we did with the cans. Um, I decide to do two cans with this piece as four, just produce something that was so large it didn't really seem like a, a good uh, amount of space to dedicate to a single piece. Um, so of course I'm gluing the cans down uh, in so much as I'm able to get them to stick. Use that circle pattern again in order to uh, cut the side of the platform will go on top of the horizontal tanks and that allows me to fit the piece in perfectly which I really appreciate and then I just use some cardboard to make the ladders um, I've got a couple of different ways of making ladders this one uh, it, it's kind of out of proportion it would be an incredibly wide ladder if you think about what this equipment is you know in context of with the mo models and everything but it looks effective you know it's very clearly a ladder from looking at it so uh you know i just try to get by uh with the other the other horizontal tanks um i am actually going to use a uh, slightly different technique for those ones Once everything is glued down, ready to start the process of uh, doing the second layer of the cardboard. So trim that up so that it can easily be a nice solid base. And of course, glue. And then once the glue is dry, we are gonna switch over to working on some details. And here you can see I am taking some of the needlepoint mesh that I frequently use for terrain and putting that down. I use clips to hold it in place because it tends to kind of uh, separate from the glue and I wanted the glue to stick. And I do some up top as well, along with a bit of cardboard in order to uh, kind of have a mix of textures. And we start applying the wood filler. The wood filler uh, adds weight, it adds a consistency that you know serves as the the basis for the basing it adds the ability to kind of fill in some gaps on various parts of the terrain it's really nifty stuff uh it's definitely it can be fragile you want to make sure that it cures as much as possible um, before you do anything to it that could damage it but go through and get all of the nooks and crannies with the filler I like to do it in spots where, you know, there's only a little thin bit of super glue holding things together, uh, like where the platforms meet the cans. Uh, it makes for a great little extra strength and bonding. Plus, as you kind of smear it across the cans, it adds a little bit of texture differential to that. And of course, I'm going to work on the other two cans a bit, I didn't film every step of the process with them because it's almost identical to the bigger piece uh, and I didn't want to make the video too long. So once again, I'm priming with my airbrush, but you could easily do this with a rattle can of black paint and then another rattle can of a gray or white. And you can get a very similar zenithal kind of uh, base coat for your stuff. So come in with the black first that's a big piece took a while and then we come in with the white on top and that gives us that nice gradient and ensures that when we put the brown down in the next step it's going to go on nice and smooth and here we are the brown is once again watered down 
uh, with some flow improver and distilled water. And we go through and we get all of the little, you know, bits. I eventually have to switch brushes because the yep, it's it's just a tight little spot in there that I have trouble getting into. So, you know, we use every tool that we can. For the bottom, once again, I am using a off-white ivory color that I am kind of mixing with the brown that I am using in order to create a slightly darker base coat. Then I come in with the orange and just splatter it everywhere because we're gonna be doing lots and lots of coats of paint and uh, it'll cover the orange up in various ways. Now we come in with the sponge to apply black ink. I go pretty heavy on this because I imagine there's a lot of scuffing that happens on this stuff. And we come in then with sponge of the silver this is steel from Vallejo's uh, metal color line. And then because I was out of pigment at the time I was working on this build, I put a little bit of a, a base layer of some kind of weathering on from the sand itself uh, using the uh, ivory color paint that I used for the base. It was not a bad foundation. And then I come in with a black wash, just like I always do. Uh, this wash, again, it, I haven't shown how I make it yet. I will in a future episode, but it is a mixture of flow improver, medium, wa uh, distilled water, and ink. And it uh, is significantly cheaper than purchasing even like other brands of uh, washes. It's just way cheaper to make it out of ink. And then I come in while the wash is still wet with the desert dust weathering powder. And there we get it. The first part of the build is done. Uh, I'll probably come back and varnish it before I take it to the game store, but it is functional and ready to go. And then of course, uh, just to finish these guys off, I also made two little horizontal cans. And gave them little tops. And you can see I tried to do the popsicle stick method, but it didn't work. So I took a different popsicle stick and then I took the corrugated paper that I used for other things and I glued it down and then glued those against the cans and that gave me a much more effective uh, ladder that would not come off as easily um, and went on a lot quicker than trying to do it with toothpicks. So I definitely recommend checking that out. Interest of brevity, I didn't film all the details of painting up the cans as it was the same process, but as you can see, they turned out well. Thanks to my patrons for helping support the show. You can become a patron for as little as $2 a month at patreon.com slash dome runners. And don't forget to check out my podcast on Buzzsprout, the dome runners. And of course, don't forget to change your paint water.